Our talk started yesterday and the focus is on flooding, the impact on families and by association their lives. You know that uh, when families are displaced, properties lost, health is impacted upon negatively, you know that lives will be affected definitely. The topic is flooding and its impact on families and by association their lives. Some say it's beyond the statistics of displaced persons, farmland lost, fishermen who are complaining, but let's talk about food insecurity and children who are out of school. As Francis tackles this and more with the Director General of the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, Clement Enze, they delve deeper and perhaps some solutions can be thrust up. Francis, please take it from here. <laughs> Food insecurity is one. Two, farmers will lose a lot of their investments. There's a dislocation of family life when for or cause. Go to Dread Boy Estate in Abuja. You saw the village were submerged. They are also a lot of valuable items, personal items. People took money from the uh, mortgage bank. How can they recover? How do you think they will recover from that? Flood incidents comes with it. All kinds of uh, communicable diseases. Uh, when the water source is uh, polluted. At times also, schools are used to put people that are displaced. It affects academic year. Then this one puts more pressure again on the scarce resource we have. Try to find alternatives. How do we mitigate? to ensure that the students don't lose any of their any of the terms I mean the academic calendar. You know what happened last year when at Kotun Karikwe between Abuja and Rukina road became a passage of weeks. We couldn't do anywhere. Because we were, we were already trapped. You could see and saw some people with their trailers carrying the, some livestock. After some days, nothing to eat, some of those uh, cows began to die inside the trailers. Maybe you have about 3,000 houses, according to 3,000 plots. You fully allocate all of them. You build beacon to beacon. You need to make provision for the flood way. Where is, where is it to lose? Out of the 3,000 houses, I'm mean, using that as a hypothetical statement. You have about 200 House or plots, rather, to plot, which could be by way of drainage systems in different locations that will be cited based on proper study that will really have to channel it. Yes, approval is being made. Who gave it? Who? The person, what background is it? They have professionally to do the work. So, many at times, the people we saddle with all those things are just like any other person. So, we refer that to whoever any plot of land or estate is after. Then, the relevant authorities hire the experts to carry out this flood vulnerability mapping. We keep saying the issue of people to locate. The big question is this, to be moving from the known to the unknown. Instead, sometimes Niger State said that in 2014, that they had a production for what they call wet housing and dry housing. In other words, they built houses up land at higher grounds, so that during the time of rainy season, those who are transacting their business within the banks of the river, whether they, are, they could be farmers or fishermen, put them up, so that in the daytime time they can go and do their business, their eyes open, in the evening they move up, in the event the flood comes. <laughs>
We should listen to early warnings. We should look at the weather predictions and we know when to go out and when to come back. We should move out of vulnerable locations, locations that are prone to flooding. People that have, have houses on waterways or people that have built on flood plains, we are pleading with them to vacate such locations. They, move, they should move to higher grounds and make sure when they want to buy a land, buy a land during the rainy season. That will help you, will take you a long way. Because when you buy a land during the rainy season, you'll be able to know the condition of that location. Is it a floodplain? Is it a vulnerable location? Is it a swampy place? Is it a place that can be flooded? When it rains, don't drive on running waters. You never can undermine the power of water. No matter how small the water is, once it is flowing, once it is flowing, please do not drive on running waters. We can do today is caption flooding impact on families and lives. That's huge, but um, as as easy as it is to comply with that uh, statement that she was saying there, don't drive on water when it's raining. People find it very challenging to, to listen. Perhaps it's challenging to understand. Well, um, Alex Alexandra Costio, she's uh, an environmental activist, and she said this like two, three years ago. She says water will be the defining crisis of our century. She said from droughts, storms, and floods, to degrading water quality. She says a lot more, but perhaps many people should listen. If we know that challenges are ahead, it may make us prepare faster, harmonize better, bring about the synergy so we can prefer lasting solutions. We're going to Mina now, where a family tells us that uh, when the flood started, um, a man and his wife and their young children had to stand from 2 a.m. in the morning up till dawn to prevent themselves from getting drowned. But they lost all that they had. Mina, take it from here. As the dark clouds gather and the heavens unleashed their fury, the peaceful city of Mina was caught off guard. With hours, the rising waters turned streets into treacherous currents, leaving families stranded and homes submerged. The sudden onset of flooding left residents bewildered and overwhelmed. Roads become impossible and panic spread as families struggled to navigate through the chaos. Emergency response teams worked tirelessly to rescue stranded residents and provide aid to those affected. This year so far, with the beginning of the, of the rainy season, we have started experiencing flood activities in our urban centers. Chanchaga is one. So far in the riverine communities, we have started receiving reports of flooding activities in Moko local government. Uh, we, are, we are already making arrangements. To, uh, some of them are, are, are already moved into makeshift tents and we're making arrangements to get to reach them with supplies. Ever since uh, NIMET and NISA brought out the 2023 uh, flood uh, outlook and uh, the climate, uh, seasonal climate prediction, we've been on our toes trying to sensitize the public on the dangers, imminent dangers of this year's flooding and giving them tips of what to do. Behind the statistics lie countless stories of loss, displacement and shattered lives. Meet the family of Musa who had to evacuate their home, leaving behind their cherished belongings. The first rain of this year, the second rain, we have to be standing with my family from 12 o'clock when that rain started till daybreak. We don't even have a place to sit down inside this our room, no place of lying down. When rain fall, it used to be disturbed us too much. My water used to fill my compound. The, uh, by the side, where water is passing through, 
the inside they got about like, these days now I, I just then finish them, do the fence. Then what happened was that what when the water came again it pushed it down. This has been affecting these communities for several years. And generally flood is a resource, not a disaster. Why is it that today flood constitutes disaster to most of our rural areas with devastating impact on the family livelihood? such that the crops that are destroyed are not replaceable. The source of uh, family livelihood is being affected. Their properties, the houses, the bridge, the roads are being washed away. How do we make it safe? It means we have to go back to the drawing board, like other developed nations. We have to develop and devolve uh, what I would call uh, proving measures that we check, that we minimize, that will make this hazard have less impact. For families like Musa, the impact of flooding is far-reaching. Their homes, once a sanctuary, are now reduced to ruins. The loss of personal possessions and the sense of stability has left them grappling. As the flood waters recede, the people of Mina are left picking up the pieces of their shattered lives, but through it all, they remain resilient and determined to rebuild and restore their community. Their stories serve as a powerful reminder of the strength of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable hardship. Interesting. We, we applaud your resilience, Imina. But typically, the Nigerian person, we have this never to never say die spirit. We're resilient in all that we do. But it's quite encouraging to see that they continue to up their game and do their best to stay safe and keep their families safe. Research shows that we inhabit a water planet. This planet is a water planet. And except we do more. Hmm. We continue to have uh, a proliferation of water refugees, and we want to do more. We're starting here. Let's meet our guest. We welcome Dr. Francis Ungenego, financial much. expert and insurance consultant. Great to have you on Weekend Deal. See me too. Love at AZ, founder, founder of LEAD. Energy Therapeutic Learning Consult. Okay. That's, I'm the lead psychologist there. Interesting. Gra great to have you on Weekend Deal. Thank you. It's I thought pleasure. we called us psychologist doctors, but you said no, just call no, me a psychologist. The psychiatrist. They are psychiatrist. medical doctors, so they call them doctors. Good. But yeah. that will not take away from the uh, <laughs> input. Not at all. Positive input you'll be bringing to our discourse today. So welcome you to Weekend Deal. Thank you very um, much. Let me start with you, Lovett. Um, when a man stands from 2 a.m. till dawn with his family in the flood of water and he's watching his life savings, you know, just ebb away, almost and he's, he, he, he's incapable of doing anything about it. Some could say that trauma starts right there. And that, then again, he moves his family somewhere else mm -hmm. and he has to find a way to rebuild that place. Even that time apart from his family, he's lost all that he's worked for perhaps a period of 10, 20 years, that could bring on trauma. Of course it does bring trauma. One thing that we must be able to understand is the moment a person is ex um, exposed to life changes, that it actually is already a lot of work. Then imagine when it's a threatening life change, something like being exposed to flood. Like you said, they had to stand for hours with children trying to preserve their lives from drowning in that kind of situation. What happens in those periods is you find them in a state of hopelessness in that, that's the immediate experience they have during the flooding. They are helpless, they are hopeless. So you see them being demoralized. And from that, we, we begin to have um, flashbacks of what happened. Imagine a young child, because the truth is that the people who are most affected um, mm -hmm. on the psychological level have been, has actually are the been young children. To, are the children. And that's but there we, is hope. There's hope. We know that there is hope. Um, and we want you to, already they are facing trauma. We would like you to, in the course of the show, begin to show pathways to hope. Hope from hopelessness. Sure. Hope and succor after 
been destabilized and devastated, but we'll get there. Dr. Francis, I know you are raring to go to oh, tell yes, us sure how I you am. take all our money, uh, but no, after no. flawed, like the kind we're witnessing in Nigeria, you know of the case at Trade More, people lost millions, houses, money, That's property, correct. and we know in some dire situations, lives have also been lost. You say Very you correct. have a solution to help them to rebuild? Oh yeah, there are a lot of things we could do, there are a lot of options. But the fact remains that, you know, I always say it and I keep on saying it and I always reiterate it, that in Nigeria we need to look for a way of finding alternatives to things. Now, you made mention of trade more. Uh, I was quite aware of what happened in trade more, but we've only pointed the fact that if you have an access, if you have an investment, mm -hmm. the first thing you do is to ensure the investment. That concept or that idea has been very, very developed and enhanced mm -hmm. in developed countries of Europe and America. So if you look at the, the, the penetration in Nigeria, it's not much. So it's our responsibility to see that we preach that gospel, we evangelize that, so that people will have that concept and you realize that having an accent is one thing and having an accent insured a second thing. We all understand that Nigeria, well... Is Ni insurance in Nigeria affordable? What kind of rates are we talking about? Because everything we're talking about is how much is it going to cost me? Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's very correct. I, I think I subscribe to what you just said. Insurance in Nigeria is very affordable. If you look at what, what you pay in insurance instead of guarding your property is what we call premium. And the premium is relatively very affordable because the, the reason or the, the most important uh, objective of insurance is for you to secure to your asset with very minimal cost. I've had the opportunity of speaking to very great likes of insurance, especially those in Conaston, the likes of Kiliberi, the likes of uh, uh, Charles Wanchiko, the likes of uh, uh, Austin Iwelu and the likes. And they said something. They said, Frank, you know what you need, you, you know what you need to do? You need to find a way of trying to propagate it. And that's what we'll be doing. But we'll talk more about that okay. from Bayelsa State. We we'll also get um, a first-person narrative of what's happening there with the flood waters. And they, of course, they know that is um, a water planet. Their experience in some cases is very dire. They share now. Globally, flooding disasters are said to have a devastating effect on development, livelihoods, agriculture, and other socioeconomic life of humans. Sometimes the effect of disaster ends in human death. In Nigeria, Bayelsa State has often suffered the worst heat in recent times. Studies show that about 90% of the state was submerged by the floodwaters of 2022. This is due to the low topography of the state which is said to be below sea level, with a network of creeks and rivers emptying into the overlapping Atlantic Ocean. Public and private places such as homes, schools and churches not affected by the flood were converted to handling internally displaced persons. Flood is a very devastating situation and like last year it was, it was terrible. And currently now, short, we can see that the flood is already coming. All the roads were flooded, children could not go to school, we were all at home, market women were complaining, there was nobody to go and buy, food, food was scarce. Considering the nature of the farm work that is being carried out in uh, obvious terrain, so mostly, it's mostly on a plantain and a cassava, but the flood have destroyed the crops. Most houses were destroyed. They were damaged, like my own, and the, especially crops in my locality that I saw. Most farms, in fact, they were underwater. The magnitude of the flood resulted in collapse of some critical infrastructures like roads, hospitals, and farmlands as well. This disrupted movement of goods and people. Sources of good water were polluted because the groundwater had already been contaminated. This posed health danger to a lot of people in the state. Some of this canal should be, um, should be drained. And then this APA creek as well should be dug so that at least it will be able to hold some of the water, even if not all. Flood losses are devastating as many never get recovered after the flood had eventually receded. The sad expression of the affected as they discovered and counted their losses, had further kept many sober and more depressed. This is therefore a clarion call on well-meaning Nigerians home and abroad 
non-governmental organizations, international bodies to join forces in supporting flood victims with finances and proper post-flood rehabilitation as regards physical and emotional health. The emotional health is very critical, mental, psychological health, and that's why Love It is here. And also, they've lost a lot. They've lost millions of property, such that there's food insecurity. But uh, Dr. Francis says he can bring the farmers back to a point where they were before. Even better, yeah. we hope. But True. let's talk first, Love It, about the psychological impact on those who have lost everything. How will you help? How can you as a psychologist, as a help, help and help. give help in a way that they can go back mentally and psychologically to a place where they were before or even better. I think I appreciate the fact that we're even talking about mental health here. You know, in Nigeria, we've always been able to focus on the medical aids, in providing medical aids in situations like this, financial aids. Even the people who talk in, they barely talked about their own mental health because they're not even very much aware that the anxieties that they feel, the grief and the um, traumatic experience and the post-traumatic stress that they will likely be going through, they don't even know that it's actually a health-related issue and can, and can be, be treated. treated and can be addressed. Now, very importantly, I think one of the major ways that psych we as psychologists can actually help is what we call psychosocial support. Now, in psychosocial support, that's, about, that's the process by which we fa facilitate and as well as strengthen resilience in people when, the, when they are thrown into such hula balloons of unexpected happenings like this. So we try to help them recover from not just recover from, but also adapt to the reality of where they find themselves. Adaptation is critical yes. too. And it's not something that is very common or popular, people seeking psychosocial support, True. but we can continue to encourage it. Yes, please Because the should. impact will go a long way. A long if the way father actually. or the mother is stable mentally, psychologically, they can impact yeah. everyone around them. True. And it goes a long way. Dr. Francis says, bring your money to me so that if natural disaster comes, I can bring you back to a point where you were before. Exactly. Farmers, fishermen, house owners, sure. business owners are losing millions mm -hmm. daily as a result of unexpected flood issues, natural disasters like the one we're witnessing now. That's true. But you are a hope. Yeah, and you can and bring hope. Soccer for that. We are all hopes. Okay, is it affordable? Is it affordable? Oh, yeah, it's very affordable. How often do they pay? How do they get involved? Okay, um, thank you very much. That's a very important question. Now, um, if you look at the whole system, especially in Nigeria, you find that the economy in Nigeria has um, put in a lot of burden on the ordinary people, the citizens. Really. As we speak from the Natural Bureau of Statistics, inflation is doing 22.79 currently for the last, last month of June. So that's a whole, whole lot. And given the recent uh, subsidy removal, you find that things are really very, very tight with people in terms of income and value and impact on the income. I have always want to advocate and probably advise that people should have a way of backup, have a way of backup. And the way, one of the ways of doing that is getting your property insured. If you get your property insured, it's like a safe plan, understand? Safe plan in the sense that whenever you have contingencies, you'll be, bring, be, you'll be brought back to indemnity. Indemnity means where you were before you were at before. a very little premium. We need to find a way of looking out of the bus. I've been advocating and I always want to do that. I was speaking to so many government um, um, organizations, agencies, all of that. Mm. I said, we we'll have to find a way of alleviating the suffering of people. Cushion. Yes, them cushion support, the people cushion here. The because one thing about life, and my psychology will agree with me, is that if you're not psychologically balanced, you'll not be productive. Mm. You understand? And that's why we advise people to plan ahead. Plan ahead means when you have income, you need to have baskets of portfolios where those income could virtually lead to profitability. Okay, for example, like these farmers now, can there be a scenario where they have the farmers association paying this premium for their members? Can they come together as a body, maybe like in Bayelsa, maybe like in a Edo state, the association mm. will pay something monthly for everyone or must it be individual? But you answer that when we return from our short break. We'll go on a break. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
it's time for us to bring on Daya's feature. You know, we've been talking with a psychologist. There's a lot that can happen to your mental and psychological health when natural disasters such as flood occur. Daya, please share. The impact of flood in Nigeria can be devastating, resulting in destruction of lives and properties and devastation of farmlands. This has led to post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Floods are also associated with depression, anxiety, sleep disorder and other psychological problems. Flooding can affect people of all ages. It can aggravate or provoke mental health problems and highlights the importance of secondary stress. If an individual therefore has an accentuated mental disorder, that means he has it before or she has it before. Now there is flooding. That problem is increased. That's one. Or the individual who is resilient now has a mental illness from the event. This, is, this one has caused the reason why we should pay attention to their mental health. And so how do we help them? You see, just a talk therapy, a cognitive behavioral therapy form, format can be used to assist them mentally. Most people who are involved in disaster recover with the support of their families, friends and colleagues. The effect on some people's health, relationships and welfare can be extensive and sustained. It is important that you are able to educate them, psychoeducation, and then cognitive behavioral therapy, talk therapy, to help them realize that there are other areas that this flood event may have exposed them, other opportunities that this may have exposed them to. And then they can begin to have a, hey, could this be true? Could it be possible that there is something better to come after this? Hope on its own keeps people alive. As government is bringing rice, as they are bringing emergency uh, palliatives for them, they should also put in place a short-term cure. How do you prevent future flooding? That's one. Then, how do you get maybe soft loans or housing schemes or mortgage uh, formulas to help them get new homes? Flood can pose substantial social and mental health problems that may continue over extended periods of time. There are fiscal illnesses that can happen because of the flooding. Because they don't have access to even good health care. Even if they have prescription, they don't even have access to get the drugs. The pharmacies they used to have probably were also taken by the flood. So when we are also able to provide other medical needs, this helps them to heal. The medical needs they are having due to the flood increases the stressor or is part of the stressors that affects their mental health. So in helping them to heal mentally, when you take away the stressor too, it helps. And then some of them have children in school. Now the schools probably are also taken by the flood or if they have to take the children to, to other schools, who pays? So government can come and say, okay, let's give scholarship to the people that have suffered flood. That helps them to heal. The need for families to come together through the family structure is quite important to mitigate the issue of mental health arising from perennial flooding. Isai, we are the adequate words to explain what some of our fellow citizens are going through or what they experience when a flood such as what we've witnessed occurs. You know, you've been with us, we've been talking with the psychologist and we've got to know that uh, the trauma can be long lasting and can impact negatively if not addressed on time. And it could affect um, the victim's capacity to rebuild what they have lost. Well, there's more. We're going to, um, as we go to Yola now, where we hear that some of the affected are trying to build barricades, but some say there's not much impact that can have. We go to Yola. Thousands of people living along the riverbanks and flood-prone areas have been battling with water as a result of heavy rainfall and sometimes the release of water from the Lagda Dam in Cameroon. Floods destroy farmlands, damage properties, endanger lives of humans and animals, and disrupt economic activities of the people, leading to financial losses and sometimes loss of lives. It even caused the community eight lives 
I think five years ago, as I was told. And since we have experienced it this year around, it was twice now, it caused a lot uh, of damages to the people. Especially if you look around, you will see some have uh, tried to erect barricade like this. Imagine having to step up like two, three coach of black before you can enter inside your compound. This is done to prevent the flooding from coming inside. Meanwhile, the flooding might even be higher than this, much more that it will enter inside your room, your parlor, to, and it will cause uh, damages to most of the things. We have um, some rivers around here. When the rain comes around, it usually overflows and comes down to our area where it disrupts a lot of farmlands and properties. Look at the level of my... my Ali Mohamed Abdullahi, Jerry Beatrice, Mohamed Mansur Ibrahim, and many others are residents of Timbershed along Newman Road, a community in the outskirts of the city of Yola. They all have one thing in common, battling with floodwaters whenever it rains. You look at our walls, look at our gates, we barricade it, and at the same time, Sometimes after the rainy season or after the, the, the flood has gone low, you have to start re-erecting re, re your, your walls. Now if you go into our houses, it becomes like a marshy area where we produce uh, rice and so on and so forth. And that is not it. We have no other alternative. And uh, secondly, we, even if we, when we have food stuff, that one is destroyed. Most of our papers or documents, of schools, we lost it because of these floods. So we, it makes us lose a lot of things that we cannot recover it now. Sometimes when it's raining, um, like we the residents would find it difficult to, you know, sleep and um, because the flood sometimes they just drop a little and you will find out that everywhere is filled up with um, water. Our rooms and our shops everywhere and most of our properties have been soaked inside the water and we lose so many things once we see the cloud all our mind is not with us at the first place and the biggest thing we people are fearing is that is our this one our children not even we as adults that means the mother and the father is the children matters because sometimes once it is raining uh, immediately after raining our children cannot be, able to, uh, cannot be able to go to school. Every year, these people are forced out of their homes, leading to short or long-term displacement or confinement in their homes, thereby disrupting their lives, routines, and social activities. Nobody will have rest of mind. Nobody sleeps. We have to pack up all our property up. And if, if the flood is so much, we have to go, very, we have to go out by the roadside, staying, squatting at the filling stations. This is Muhammad, and this is his shade along the riverbank, where he carries out his laundry activities, and he's been here for 35 years. The waters come gradually, so we pack our properties and leave. And once there is flood, it affects my business. I will be out of work for the period of the flood, which makes it difficult to take care of my needs and that of my family. The impact of the flood on families are costly, disruptive, and distressing. The impact, uh, flood impact can be very devastating and nerve-wracking. And it goes without saying that it can affect your mental and psychological health to so the extent where you will not be able to function at optimal capacity. Who even teaches one how to manage disaster? There's no classroom or skill development that helps us to build that. And that's where the psychologists come in. We have agreed, Lovett, that it will be challenging for them to come access psychologists. And oftentimes we have psychologists such as yourself in urban areas not in satellite towns or riverine areas where farmers and fishermen often occupy. So how does this uh, treatment, how does this um, facility 
get to those who need it the okay. most. Okay, something we call mental health and psychosocial support is a system that was first of all created by WHO. Now, it's been adapted by most NGOs where we've been able to create relief in um, disastrous situations similar to flood. So at this point, it means that we need, NG we need the financial capacity to be able to take um, psychologists to these areas in order to provide the necessary intervention. We, I can't, there's a level, if I'm giving an advice, what I'm doing here is an advice. During therapy, I'm not giving you an advice. I'm taking you through the motion, through your mind, to understand, to move your mind away from negative thoughts, move from the negative emotions to the possibilities that still are available. And that happens in one-on-one -on -one talk. Therapy one on one sessions. interaction is necessary. It's very necessary. To get the best uh, impact. Exactly. And the government can actually also get involved because it's a need. Psychological um, traumas are not seen on the faces. A person might even be given money and can restart their business, but they are, they are going to post traumatic stress. Hence, they would fail because they do not see the drive to do something that the would The drive fail. is not it's there. It's no longer there. Imagine I keep having flashbacks of scary scenes. Nightmares. Nightmares. Could occur. At what point do, is my mind stable enough to manage? my business there's no productivity without a proper mental health it's it doesn't work that way work. if you want productivity then the mental state of a person must has be to optimized be. exactly okay so it's up to you now and your team to prefer ingenious <laughs> solutions yes. where <laughs> partnerships can be harmonized yes, very um, <laughs> but you do know that our culture in nigeria you know in times past it wasn't common or advised to take your personal challenges and go tell a stranger, stranger in court yes. so it's something we need to realign our minds yes. to 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 embrace true. to embrace so that we can get the best treatment very true. Uh, you know at any given time well uh, membe has been doing some research into finances you know we know that government um, helps with relief sometimes cash uh, cash gifts but we do know that there's a stipulated way with the insurance uh, knowledge we're getting today in which people can benefit when they have done the groundwork well Membe did some research she will share this now flooding may occur as an overflow of water from water bodies such as rivers lakes or oceans in which the water overtops or breaks leaves resulting in some of that water escaping its usual boundaries, or it may occur due to an accumulation of rainwater on saturated ground in an area of flood. What support and resources are available for families affected by flood? When flood uh, strike, uh, you need to search for the victims and rescue them. Then you need to provide them with food, with non-food items, with temporary shelter to stabilize their lives because they leave their house, they leave their farms, they leave their businesses uh, unprepared with nothing and they need to have a roof over their beds, they need to have food, they need these basic necessities that we take for granted, mattresses, nylon mats, towel, bath soap detergents, and they need health facilities. Some will be sick, they will need medicaments, they will need drugs. Uh, you need to even protect the rights of those uh, who are affected. Who is responsible in making the movement of flood victims without financial burden on them? From numerous sources, um, from all the jurisdictions, from federal, from state, from local government. It comes from multiple NGOs, Ministry of Health, they provide the health support, both in the camps and outside the camps. When flood comes, there will be water issues. Cholera will come, unless you give good clean water. Our government assistance initiative accessible to families displaced? We have so far built about 44 hostels in 22 worst hit states in 2012. This state has two hostels. That gives a respite for people affected in the so that we no longer use uh, primary schools as a temporary shelter because 
schools got to continue no matter the situation. Do flood victims have access to insurance and financial assistance to rebuild their homes? If we have a scheme, a system which government put in place and saying, okay, for every property, you know, there must be insurance. It gives you a leeway, even the same that we just bring, you know, a mega of it as premium. And when they are eventually present problem, all of the insurance firms will definitely come to your rescue. But the truth about it is that are they statutory? And that's where I feel government has a role to play, major role to play. They should make it statutory. Flood is devastating on many levels and not only because of its significant disruption to service and property damage, but also it puts lives at risk in the home and on the road. No matter how small an overflow of water is, a stitch in time saves nine before it regenerates to flood. Member did that for us from NTA Knowledge, very incisive. And it um, happens that Dr. Francis is here. But when we come back to him, he will continue with that uh, line of discourse. Now, we go to Meduguri, life in limbo. You know what that means? That means your life is hanging in the balance. And we heard our psychologist say here that um, when you leave the driver's seat and you become a passenger, eventually you are in the boat. If you don't manage mental, psychological, physical health adequately, let's go to Meduguri. Today's meteorological forecast and climate change analysis reveal challenging and looming warnings of ecological disasters in varied geopolitical regions. Borno State in general, there are prone areas for uh, this flood. We have, we have about uh, 15 local governments that are prone for these flood issues. If you recall, Damasak Mobile local government is one of the area. Benishek, Ngamdu Benishek is one of the area. Shani local government is another area, part of um, Howell also. Then you go to Ran, uh, uh, that is uh, Ran, the Kala Belgi local government, Gaboru Ngala, Ngala local government, Dikwa, Dikwa local government, and a host of them. Even metropolitan that we live here, you see because of the terrain of the environment, People go about uh, dumping refuse, building anyhow, constructing unnecessary things that break blockages all over. And once there's heavy rainfall, you hardly can assess your, your, your house. Communities need to be sensitized in the areas of disaster risk reductions. Normally what the Red Cross plays, or in addition, we collaborate with the other stakeholders, especially the National Emergency Management Agency and then the State Emergency Management Agency, who were primarily established to coordinate the activities of humanitarian organizations. And day before yesterday, NEMA convened a preparation meetings in anticipation of this uh, plot in case of any uh, in eventuality. Unforeseen impact of flooding on families and lives in Maiduguri and northeastern Nigeria continuously attract local and international emergency focus. So in that situation, when airbag populations were displaced, the Nigeria Red Cross Society is the only organization that first respondents to come out and alleviate the sufferings of the people. We mobilize the populations to one to the safest areas, and then we also equally support them in evacuating of their goods and then other needful things. And if they were displaced and IDP centers were established, of course, we take over the responsibilities in providing the services that we use to do as a humanitarian voluntary organizations. In years past, there are a lot of engagement, particularly with the UN organs in the state due to the response to the crisis that we find ourselves. The United Nations, international organizations, and even the local organizations, they have been giving us things like training, capacity building. They, we, we, we train personnel. We, at, at, at times, they even respond by uh, giving out relief items to victims of a uh, flood. But more of it is government-led. International communities now in Nigeria, they focus more on the conflict-affected people not those who are affected by natural disaster. So it's very hard to get them to attend to natural disaster anyway. So I think now the best option that we focus on our own national uh, emergency response like NEMA and SEMA. The tremendous adverse effect connected with seasonal flooding has prompted the government and relevant agencies to initiate strategic framework and plans to collaboratively tackle problems faced by most vulnerable and at risk communities. Targeted policy implementation plans can only be achieved through proper compliance with government regulations 
in averting devastating flood crisis. We are talking, in fact, we are watching that uh, feature for Meduguru. We are just talking, the psychologist and the financial experts, sharing ideas together. You know, sometimes we are part and parcel of these challenges. I was just telling my guests yesterday that when I took a stroll on the Mika Ayoko um, last week, I saw all the gutters were full with refuse. We've already seen that most of the psychological assistance is needed in areas not close to urban centers. And you have now said government needs to come on board or NGOs yes, to yes. provide the financial assistance yes, needed yes. for you to go there. But on your own part, don't you have um, associations that can meet associations like we have farmers associations, fishermen too, they have associations, even real estate, they have associations. And many of them have their big offices here in the federal capital territory. Are you thinking in that line? Okay, that means the possibility of reaching out to these people to be the ones to fund, those to finance our or going. Or to spread the awareness, awareness that this kind of assistance is needed, is actually needed. Because they are empowered more as a federal level than at the local communities or states. I think what you have said now would actually be a good idea because I haven't thought about it before. But if we can actually reach out to people who can help get the word out there that these people need this help, even if they know it or they don't know it, but when we you know, don't know, they still need the help. And if we do nothing about it, we will leave them stuck in a situation where we've had people who go through post-traumatic stress disorder for years. Some people can come out of it in a and few weeks. And to right? suicide. Exactly. So there's a whole lot here. The hopelessness that depression brings, brings about could bring about other negative um, experiences. Self-harm. People harm themselves, wanting to kill themselves in different ways or just to even harm themselves. So people go ahead and as mutilating their bodies just because of um, near-death experiences. They're unhappy with something they've of, experienced. Exactly. So, yes, it becomes very important that we actually are actively looking forward to doing something to assist them and from what you said i think it would be a good idea to reach out to organizations here that could stir up the um, federal parastatus to do what can be what done can and should be should done be as done. soon as possible okay we still have um another feature you know we're going to kaduna at this time and in kaduna we're going to sokoto wow in sokoto we are told that um sustaining livelihoods has become a major challenge for many let's go there Uncertainty marks raining season for flooding or not, except for predictions from meteorologists. Farmers and fishermen look forward to rain. We plant rice, maize, and other crops with high expectations for rain to make them grow. Though I'm a fisherman, I still look forward to rain. Livelihood is key as these men improve. Enormous determination, knowing here lies the only hope for means of survival for their families and other dependents. We have enlightened the farmers about uh, the areas that may likely be affected. We have advised the farmers on what to do. Number one is to get uh, an early maturing uh, variety of seeds that. Uh, it will be cultivated before the coming of the flooding. Number two, there are some varieties that can resist, that can withstand the flooding. So those uh, that uh, want to go for, uh, for, for a long-range variety, they can use that variety that can resist, uh, that can withstand the, 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 the flooding. So that is another way of doing it then. Others may may differ their cropping calendar until when the flooding subside. When flood erupts, it's like disaster unleashed, wasted efforts of children and adults. In the next few weeks, this place that the water you are seeing here, it will fill the whole place and it will cover the plants. So you will not be able to see yeah, and uh, all these ones that, uh, that, that, that have already started fruiting. So once the fruit is matured, you have to use canoe to come in using canoe and be, and be harvesting. Otherwise, you will not get anything. Mm. So, and uh, those that uh, did not mature, you just have to leave it like that. Again, you intake on a 
Normally, I catch fish worth 15 to 20,000 daily. But when flood comes, we have to move away. Life must continue despite all odds. But survival after disasters such as flooding. The flood can at once sweep away all we have, including our fishing tools. Honestly, we suffer when flood comes, nothing left to cater for the family. Unfortunately, news on TV and radio says we are assisted by government, which is not true. Is it possible to beat the flood at it? These farmers will not leave their domain despite warnings and forecast from meteorologists to do so. Yeah, uh, as far as flooding, uh, we have received the weather forecast from Nemet and uh, we have communicated to the farmers uh, there is uh, likely to be flooding this year in uh, some of uh, the local government in Sokoto State and uh, uh, the farmers are duly informed about that. Yeah. Flood may sweep everything we lost here and may gain there. Life continues. If we live where we are because of the prediction of the rain, where will we go to? Let the flood come first, then we know the next thing to do. You know, we just heard uh, that uh, fisherman say that let the flood come first and they will know what to do. And for many, that seems to be the problem. According to our guest yesterday, Air Vice Marshal Akube Yamu retired. He said we're already in crisis mode because every year the flood gets worse. You already know it will come, whether they tell you or not. So we must always be alert. And being alert means we must be prepared. But we're going to Gombe now where there's much talk about the economic impact. People lose a lot, but we'll learn more from Gombe. Flooding occurs in areas located on flat or slopey terrain, especially where little or no provision is made for drainage or where existing drainage is blocked with municipal waste. Urban flooding has been a recurring issue in most parts of the country, including Gombe especially during rainy season. Research indicates that rapid urbanization, poor spatial planning, poor solid waste management and poor drainage system remain major causes of flood. Gombe State has been recording cases of flooding in almost every rainy season, from Gombe Tsunami to Bajoga, Balanga, Nafada, Kwame and Kaltungo flash and coastal flooding. The 2003 flooding that claimed about 13 lives was a bitter experience. The similar ones in Bajoga, Nafada, Balanga, Kaltungo and Yamal Tudeba local government areas which devastated lives and property in recent years will also be remembered for years to come. Roughly about, uh, about 22,000 fish we lost last year. And uh, they, are, they, are, they were just about eight weeks and in amount about uh, a million plus. It followed it, all the plants that I planted here. I am expecting to get 50 bucks of soya beans here, but what I have is eight bucks of soya beans and four bucks of guinea corn. Their farms are washed away, their houses are destroyed, so we have displaced, internally displaced persons automatically. Their properties, which could be billions or millions destroyed. To prevent possible devastation by flood this year, authorities in Gombe State have been advising people living on waterways to leave. The State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, also advised the people to adhere to the warning signs of potential flooding this year. I'm aware of it, and uh, that's why we had to come back to the yeah, earth pond, because as you can see, We've made provision for excess water. If there is excess rainfall and uh, it comes into our fish pond, we have uh, outlets that will just take out the excess uh, water without it destroying our pond or our fish. That's the preventive measures we take in regards to the ad pond. Government can come in by uh, establishing drainages because uh, 
for the, I, I, I've been I've been into fish farming for over 20 years now, and we just had this problem last year. And why why the problem came in was because the drainages, the the water drainages were blocked. We need a a drainage that will collect all the waters, all the water that has been coming from the town to the river base. Because most of the drainage actually were being blocked by other plastic materials and some other waste materials. We have come out early in the morning so that to flush out those materials that have blocked the drainage. We went to those three local governments. We sensitized them on the need to prevent or to curtail the imminent rainfall prediction. Even to the other local governments that were not mentioned from the uh, release of the floods. Back to the FCT from Gombe, where we see farmers and uh, fishermen, you know, crying out. They've lost uh, a lot, a lot. I mean, we cannot quantify their losses. But a uh, good thing that uh, Dr. Francis is here to tell us how the farmer and the fisherman, perhaps with uh, ingenious methods, can ensure something such that um, they can get indemnity. But you did listen when they said what they need is drainages. They called on the government to provide more drainages. While the government also advised them uh, to leave, when they hear of the flood uh, information, they need to move. Sometimes they often ask us, move to where? You know, but what are the solutions you can proffer, Dr. Francis? All right, thank you very much. Um, I think I like, I like your last comment when you said move to where. I wonder what that translates to is having an alternative. Now, I want to say this, and I've always advocated this. I think it's very important at this point, just like you mentioned, that the last guest that came here said we're in a crisis period. No doubt about that. I totally agree with that, absolutely. Government should find a way of piling the private organized sector because government cannot do it alone. Flooding is basically caused by you know, over, over, overflowing of the river banks. Dams should be built. Dams, yeah, and drainages, you know. So if those river banks are being drained, it will mm -hmm. help. Secondly, the Lagodi Dam very close to Cameroon. Anytime it's being spilling opened, his water, it's spilling. So we should look at that. It's very, very key. Stay hopeful. We want to thank you very much, Dr. Francis, financial expert much. and insurance consultant, pleasure, for lending yeah. your voice to our discuss. Love it. It's, a, it's been a pleasure. We want to see more aggressive synergies that will have the most impact on everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for pleasure, coming. It's a pleasure. As we wrap up our program, we remind ourselves that we live on the water planet and conflicts over water and uh, refugees, water refugees, will continue to increase except we become more committed, except we synergize more and more determined and more focused to bring about the change that Nigeria needs. We must protect, we must manage and we must restore our water to ensure that the future that we imagine will be as it is because if things continue the way they are, there, there may be more negative surprises in store for us all. So let's continue to work together and do what is best for our big country, Nigeria. God bless Nigeria. One of us here is Baba.